Worship band, what a marvelous way to begin our day of worship together. Good morning, and welcome here to Trinity on this 17th Sunday after the day of Pentecost. It is a soggy day out there, but we give thanks and praise to God for the gift of rain to replenish his creation. We want to say also a word of welcome to those of you who are joining us via our live stream. We are delighted that you are a part of our worshiping congregation this day as we gather to hear God's word, to lift up one another in prayer, and to sing God's praises. A bunch of announcements to call to your attention today. Uh, first of all, Sunday school is at 10 o'clock. Uh, adult forum meets at 1015 down in our fellowship hall. 11 a.m. is second grade Bible class. And tonight at 6 p.m., our youth group fall kickoff event from 6 to 8. So a very busy day here at Trinity, and we're excited. That follows upon us, and we're returning to all of our fall programming. Also a note that the choir will be rehearsing this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, this Wednesday for choir at 6 p.m. Um, also regarding Wednesday nights, we are looking for volunteers to help us with our Wednesday night suppers. You do not have to have a, a child involved in WAS or in confirmation. If you just love to cook and you need somebody to cook for, 
we would love to have you sign up. And if you don't do online sign up, um, please see Denise and she will make sure um, she gets you on our calendar. We really appreciate that. And then finally, it is with deep sadness that I announced the death of one of our parishioners. Um, Lowell back at Lowell passed away. Um, funeral services are still pending for Lowell and we keep our and Lowell's entire family in our thoughts and in our prayers as they grieve his death. And as they look for hope to the joy of resurrection and the promise of eternal life. The rest of the announcements, I encourage you to read at your leisure. And at this time, I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us sing together our gathering hymn, Joy to the Journey.
us pray the prayer of the day together. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And this morning we want to say thank you to our worship band for leading us in worship today and also to Nancy and Judy who will be providing our special music today. We thank all of you for sharing your ministry of music with our congregation.
First reading is from Jonah 3. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is it is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, and for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when the dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked what he might, that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then God said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? We'll be reading Psalm 145 responsively. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The second reading is from Philippians 1. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith. So I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or an absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them there is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. At this time, I invite the children forward for the children's sermon.
Not yet, guys. Not yet. Oh, we have a couple more coming down. Come on up. Okay, can you guys turn around and face me for a little bit? I have a story I want to share with you today. Good morning and welcome and thank you for coming out front. Um, Harry, when he was reading the lessons, the very first lesson was a guy by the name of Jonah. And Jonah had the most marvelous encounter. It's probably one of the most exciting stories in the Bible. And so I want to share that story with you today. And it's called Jonah and the Very Big Fish. It says, Jonah was a prophet of God. And one day God told Jonah, go to the big city of Nineveh and tell the people to stop doing bad things. But Jonah ran away. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. Instead, he got on a boat to set sail across the sea. God sent a big storm to stop Jonah. The sailors on the boat were afraid, and they thought that the boat was going to sink. Jonah told the sailors, my God has sent the storm. If you throw me into the water, the sea will be calm again. So what do you think they did? They threw him in the water. That's right. They threw Jonah into the raging sea. Instantly, the sea became calm. Just then, what did Jonah see coming? A really big fish, a whale. Gulp. Uh Uh-oh, what happened? The whale swallowed Jonah. For three days and three nights, Jonah was inside the fish. He prayed to God, God, please forgive me. Then God told the fish to spit Jonah onto the dry land. And then God told Jonah a second time, go and tell the people of Nineveh to stop doing bad things. So what do you think Jonah did? We'll see. This time, Jonah obeyed God. The people in Nineveh were sorry for doing bad things. And so God forgave them, just like he forgave Jonah. Sometimes in life, like Jonah, we don't always make the right decision the first time. And we learn, though, from our mistakes. And we ask for God's forgiveness. And God provides a way forward. And that's a pretty amazing thing that happened to Jonah, don't you think? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be inside a really big fish? Have you? I always thought that, that I can't even imagine what it must have been like. Well, thankfully for you, we have a visitor today. And thanks to our seventh grade confirmation class, who actually constructed a really big fish the other night, we're going to show you the whale And a little bit later on, not during church, but after Sunday school is over, the the whale will be downstairs in the fellowship hall, and you can go inside of it and see what it was like to be Jonah. And remember God's words to Jonah, that I forgive you, just like I forgave the people of Nineveh, because they learned and changed their bad behavior, and God forgave them and gave them the gift of grace. So give us a few minutes, and our wonderful acolytes here are going to unroll the really big fish. I know it doesn't look like a really big fish, but it actually is a 25-foot fish. How's that for a really good fishing story? Okay, go all the way across. Yep, there you go. Okay, and then June, I'm going to have you, yep, stand on the end. Okay, go ahead, and we'll see what happens with the fish. There we go. How is that? 
Isn't that amazing? You actually, once it's inflated, you actually crawl in on this side and you can go into a 25 foot whale. How amazing is that? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, we're gonna ask you to shut off the fan for now. Whoop, there he goes. That's the thing with really big fish. You got them on the reel, but it's hard to bring them into the boat, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna let it deflate and we'll roll it back up. Remember, after Sunday school, you can go down to the fellowship hall and we will have the whale there and you can crawl inside and see. And remember, it's a wonderful way to remember Jonah's story. God forgave him when he didn't make the best choice. So we'll wait till it deflates and we'll roll it up and then you guys can return to your, um, to your seats with your families. Okay, do you want to roll it? Thank you. Very good. Thank you guys for coming forward. Okay. Go ahead and stand up. There you go. Thank you. While they are returning to their families, we invite you to please stand as you are able as we read the gospel and as we sing the song of the word. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for his usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. So they went, he went out again about noon and about three o'clock and he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first shall be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today's Gospel reading brings out echoes of that old and familiar chorus. It's not fair. And for parents everywhere, there is not a phrase that is not more universally well-known or heard than this one. But mom or dad, it's not fair. I can remember back to when I was eight years old, arguing with my parents about my older sister. I was upset as an eight-year-old because she got to stay up till 10, and my younger brother and I had to go to bed at eight. I can't tell you how many times the phrase, but mom, it's not fair. That phrase also covered my enviousness by the fact that she got to have the biggest bedroom in our farmhouse all to herself. And because she was oldest, she got the first pick of chores that she would do. At eight years old, it's amazing at how unfair the world can seem. It was not until many years later that I found out that while I was busy saying that to my parents, my older sister was also saying to the, my parents the same about me. As the oldest, how come I have more chores than they do? They get out of everything because they're younger. It's not fair. And I wish I could say that we as human beings, that we would grow up and out of that particular phase. But if we're truthful with ourselves, nope, not so much. As adults, we seem still to notice if another coworker gets a promotion that we think we had coming. Or as adults, we still seem to notice if a neighbor drives a much nicer car than the one we are driving. The fact is, no matter what age we are, we still are and remain on the lookout for what we think we are entitled to, what we think we have coming to us, what we think we deserve, especially when we compare ourselves to what others have. Today's gospel reveals that we are not alone in that particular endeavor. That was a big part of those early disciples' questions that they were wrestling with, too. In fact, today's parable was told by Jesus specifically to address this rampant enviousness on the part of humanity. Why? Because in the verses immediately before today's gospel, Peter had told Jesus rather emphatically, But Lord, we left everything to follow you. You see, he and the rest of the disciples were re expecting great rewards for what they perceived to be the sacrifices that they had made. And to make a long story short, they figured they had earned it, and they certainly deserved it. Therefore, they had it coming and were entitled to it. And the disciples were so entrenched in this belief that when Jesus shares this parable today, the very next verses in Matthew reveal, even after he speaks to his disciples for the third time of his coming passion and death, the mother of James and John, the disciples, comes forward. And what does she ask Jesus? To grant her son's special privileges. She asks Jesus that her sons be allowed to be seated on his right hand and on his left. And so you see how deeply entrenched we are as human beings in this long-held belief that we are entitled to what we are owed. But that's where today's gospel shakes us up and turn our lives upside down. For this story is not about people who have worked long and hard their whole lives and who deserve what is promised to them. No, this story is about day laborers, people who live day to day and who never know for sure if and when they will be able to find work. 
This story is about people who linger in the street corners all day long through the heat of the sun, wondering if and how long it will be that someone will notice them and offer them a job. This story is about people who are so desperate that they continue day after day after day to come to those street corners, even late into the day, even while their hopes are fading, that anyone will choose them. What this story of Jesus does is that it invites us who are so caught up in our own lives to pause, to open our eyes and especially our hearts to a much larger perspective on life. It invites us to move beyond our focus on ourselves and what we have earned or deserved to really see the other day laborers who might still be waiting for us that we can see bigger to notice others and their needs but then also notice and experience the third perspective that is in this parable. And that is the generosity of the landowner. A God, we see in this landowner, a God who goes out not once, not twice, but again and again and again. Hours through the day, hoping to find and to notice and to invite more and more people to come and to be part of that incredible harvest of abundance. Because in the end, it is not and never will be about the reward. It is not about how much we will or won't get paid. In the end, it's about the love and generosity of God and about the invitation. It is about a God who notices every single person and invites and claims them because this God has a generosity that knows no bounds. His grace transforms and sustains and his love invites us because ultimately we all stand equal as incredibly blessed recipients of this good and generous God. And isn't it amazing that you and I get to be a part of it all? Today we celebrate that invitation. We recognize and we celebrate God's rich generosity. And we do so not only by worshiping him, but also by following him. We do so by opening our hearts and our eyes to see others in our church others in our community who, like those day laborers, might still be standing by on the sidelines, waiting and hoping to be noticed, waiting for the opportunity to jump in and serve, waiting only to be considered important enough to ask. Because down deep, no one, no one wants to be left out. No one wants to feel that their gifts and their labor aren't important or aren't valued. Because in God's kingdom, all are welcome. All are invited. And are, all are of great value. This week, may God speak anew to our hearts. May we not only be granted the ears to hear where he is inviting us to work in that harvest, May we also be granted the eyes enough to see where we also can share in this gift of noticing and inviting and reaching out. Then all will come to know the saving grace of this good and amazingly generous God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
stand as you are able and together let us share in the faith that God calls us to that a faith we hold in common and we share this faith by saying the Apostles Creed together I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lead us to be thankful for the blessings of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, you are the God who sends the wind and the sun. You know in Jonah's story every worm and every bush by name. Help us to remember that even the humblest parts of creation are indeed precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you are always ready to relent from punishing. Impart your compassionate wisdom to all who are leaders. Grant them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty stress or exhaustion Lord in your mercy God you are a God who indeed saves direct your people who are tempted by evil ways protect your children from calamity and disaster strengthen all who are in need encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind today we pray for your ongoing healing for Russ Wayne Herb Pastor Bagney, Shirley, and Cody. We also pray for the family of Lowell Bacadal as they grieve his death. Lord, in your mercy. God, you indeed are slow to anger. 
May we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence that the Apostle Paul had even while he was in prison. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called to in your world and in service to all our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you abound in steadfast love. And today we give thanks for the saints called to the kingdom of heaven. United with the communion of saints in spirit, hold us firm as we labor in this life and yet look forward to the life that is still to come. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, O oh gracious God, remember us according to your steadfast love. As we offer these and also the prayers of all of our hearts, trusting in your compassion, made known to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we will share the offering of our gifts and our tithes, and we invite the children to come forward for the noisy offering. stand as you are able and let us pray together as our Savior has taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we hear God's word of blessing, and it is a blessing that is older even than the prophet Jonah. It goes all the way back to Moses and to Aaron. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today our sending him is to be alive. And many years ago, this was the theme at the ELCA Youth Gathering in Atlanta. I was very privileged to be able to go to that. 32,000 Lutheran youth all in the Georgia Dome, singing and praising. It was amazing. We also, for our guest speaker that year, heard Martin Luther King's daughter Bernice speak. And it was such a powerful and life-changing experience. We have the opportunity to send our young people to New Orleans next year for our national youth gathering there. If you um, are interested, please make sure you talk to Denise. I really highly encourage you to think about it. It is, again, a life-changing experience. So let's sing together our sending hymn, To Be Alive. To be alive is to live a love that is alive. In God's living time, we rise back from a life of death to be alive. Thanks be to God.